Hello, listener. Today, I will be reading a number of poems by W. H. Auden. First, the secret agent. Control of the passes was, he saw, the key to this new district, but who could get it? He, the trained spy, had walked into the trap for a bogus guide seduced with the old tricks. At Greenhearth was a fine site for a dam, and easy power had they pushed the rail. Some stations nearer, they ignored his wires. The bridges were unbuilt and trouble coming. The street music seemed gracious now to one, for weeks up in the desert, woken by water, running away in the dark, he often had reproached the night for a companion, dreamed of already. They would shoot, of course, parting easily, who were never joined. The next poem I will read is This Lunar Beauty. This lunar beauty has no history, is complete and early. If beauty later bear any feature, it had a lover and is another. This, like a dream, keeps other time in daytime is the loss of this, for time is inches and the heart changes where ghost has haunted, lost and wanted. But this was never a ghost's endeavor, nor finished this was ghost at ease, and till it pass, love shall not near the sweetness here, nor sorrow take his endless look. Next poem I will read is The Wanderer. Doom is dark and deeper than any sea dingle. Upon what man it fall, in spring, day-wishing flowers appearing, avalanche sliding, white snow from rock face, that he should leave his house, no cloud-soft hand can hold him, restraint by women. But ever that man goes, through place-keepers, through forest trees, a stranger to strangers over undried sea. Houses for fishes, suffocating water, or lonely on fell as chat, by potholed becks, a bird stone haunting, an unquiet bird. Their head falls forward, fatigued at evening, and dreams of home, waving from window, spread of welcome, kissing of wife under single sheet. But waking sees bird flocks nameless to him, through doorway voices of new men making another love. Save him from hostile capture, from sudden tiger's spring at corner, Protect his house, his anxious house where days are counted, from thunderbolt protect, from gradual rain spreading like a stain, converting number from vague to certain, bring joy, bright day of his returning, lucky with day approaching, with leaning dawn. The next poem I will read is Who's Who. A shilling life will give you all the facts. How father beat him, how he ran away, what were the struggles of his youth, what acts made him the greatest figure of his day, of how he fought, fished, hunted, worked all night, though giddy, climbed new mountains, named a sea, some of the last researchers even write, love made him weep, his pints like you and me. With all his honors on, he sighed for one, who, say, astonished critics, lived at home, did little jobs about the house with skill and nothing else, could whistle, would sit still, or potter round the garden, answered some of his long, marvelous letters, but kept none. The next poem I will read is titled, On This Island. Look, stranger, at this island now. The leaping light for your delight discovers, stand stable here and silent be, that through the channels of the ear may wander like a river, the swaying sound of the sea. Here at the small field's ending pause, where the chalk wall falls to the foam, and its tall ledges oppose the pluck and knock off the tide, and the shingle scrambles after the sucking surf, and the gull lodges a moment on its sheer side. Far off like floating seeds, the ships diverge on urgent voluntary errands, and the full view indeed may enter. 
and move in memory as now these clouds do that pass the harbor mirror and all the summer through the water saunter the next poem i will read is entitled lullaby lay your sleeping head my love human on my faithless arm time and fevers burn away individual beauty from thoughtful children and the grave proves a child ephemeral but in my arms till break of day let the living creature lie mortal guilty but to me the entirely beautiful soul and body have no bounds to lovers as they lie upon her tolerant enchanted slope in their ordinary swoon grave the vision venus sends of supernatural sympathy universal love and hope while an abstract insight wakes among the glaciers and the rocks the hermit's sensual ecstasy certainty fidelity on the stroke of midnight pass like vibrations of a bell and fashionable madmen raise their pedantic boring cry every farthing of the cost all the dreaded cards foretell shall be paid but from this night not a whisper not a thought not a kiss nor look be lost beauty midnight vision dies let the winds of dawn that blow softly round your dreaming head such a day of sweetness show eye and knocking heart may bless find the mortal world enough noons of dryness see you fed by the involuntary powers nights of insult let you pass watched by every human love the next poem i will read is titled spain yesterday all the past the language of sighs spreading to china along the trade routes the diffusion of the counting frame and the cromlech yesterday the shadow reckoning in the sunny climates yesterday the assessment of insurance by cards the divination of water yesterday the invention of cartwheels and clocks the taming of horses yesterday the bustling world of the navigators yesterday the abolition of fairies and giants the fortress like a motionless eagle eyeing the valley the chapel built in the forest yesterday the carving of angels and alarming gargoyles the trial of heretics among the columns of stone yesterday the theological feuds in the taverns and the miraculous cure at the fountain yesterday the sabbath of witches but today the struggle yesterday the installation of dynamos and termines the construction of railro railways in the colonial desert yesterday the classic lecture on the origin of mankind but today the struggle yesterday the belief in the absolute value of greek the fall of the curtain upon the death of a hero yesterday the prayer to the sunset and the adoration of madmen but today the struggle as the poet whispers startled among the pines or where the loose waterfall sings compact or upright on the crag by the leaning tower oh my vision oh send me the luck of the sailor and the investigator peers through his instruments at the inhuman provinces the virile baculus or enormous jupiter finished but the lives of my friends i inquire i inquire and the poor in their fireless lodgings dropping the sheets of the evening paper our day is our loss oh show us history the operator the organizer time the refreshing river and the nations combine each cry invoking the life that shapes the individual belly and orders the private nocturnal terror did you not found the city-state of the sponge raise the vast military empires of the shark and the tiger establish the robin's plucky canton intervene oh descend as a dove or a furious papa or a mild engineer but descend and the life if it answers at all replied from the heart and the eyes and the lungs from the shops and squares of the city oh no i am not the mover not today not to you to you i am the yes man the bar companion the easily duped i am whatever you do i am your vow to be good your humorous story i am your business voice i am your marriage 
What's your proposal? To build the just city? I will. I agree. Or is it the suicide pact? The romantic death? Very well. I accept, for I am your choice, your decision. Yes, I am Spain. Many have heard it on remote peninsulas, on sleepy plains, in the aberrant fishermen's islands, or the corrupt heart of the city. Have heard and migrated like gulls or the seeds of a flower. They clung like burrs to the long expresses that lurch through that unjust lands, through the night, through the alpine tunnel. They floated over the oceans. They walked the passes. All presented their lives. On that arid square, that fragment nipped off the hot Africa, soldered so crudely to inventive Europe. On that tableland scored by rivers, our thoughts have bodies, the menacing shapes of our fever, are precise and alive. For the fears which made us respond to the medicine ad and the brochure of winter cruises have become invading battalions, and our faces, the institute face, the chain store, the ruin, are projecting their greed as the firing squad and the bomb. Madrid is, at, is the heart. Our moments of tenderness blossom as the ambulance and the sandbag, our hours of friendship into a people's army. Tomorrow, perhaps the future, the research on fatigue and the movements of packers, the gradual exploring of all the octaves of radiation. Tomorrow, the enlarging of consciousness by diet and breathing. Tomorrow, the rediscovery of romantic love, the, pho the photographing of ravens, all the fun under liberty's masterful shadow. Tomorrow, the hour of the pageant master and the musician. The beautiful roar of the chorus under the dome. Tomorrow, the exchanging of tips on the breeding of terriers. The eager election of chairman by the sudden forest of hands. But today, the struggle. Tomorrow, for the young, the poets exploding like bombs. The walks by the lake. The weeks of perfect communion. Tomorrow, the bicycle races through the suburbs on summer evenings. But today, the struggle. Today, the deliberate increase in the chances of death, the conscious acceptance of guilt in the necessary murder. Today, the expending of powers on the flat ephemeral pamphlet and the boring meeting. Today, the makeshift consolations, the shared cigarette, the cards in the candlelit barn, and the scraping concert, the masculine jokes. Today, the fumbled and unsatisfactory embrace before hurting. The stars are dead. The animals will not look. We are left alone with our day, and the time is short, and history to the defeated. May say, alas, but cannot help nor pardon. The next poem I will read is, As I Walked Out One Evening. As I walked out one evening, walking down Bristol Street, the crowds upon the pavement were fields of harvest wheat. And down by the brimming river I heard a lover sing, under an arch of the railway, love has no ending. I'll love you, dear, I'll love you, till China and Africa meet, and the river jumps over the mountain, and the salmon sing in the street. I'll love you till the ocean is folded and hung up to dry, and the seven stars go squawking like geese about the sky. The year shall run like rabbits, for in my arms I hold the flowers of the ages and the first love of the world. But all the clocks in the city began to whir and chime. Oh, let not time deceive you, you cannot conquer time. In the burrows of the nightmare, where justice naked is, time watches from the shadow and coughs when you would kiss. In headaches and in worry, vaguely life leaks away, and time will have his fancy tomorrow or today. Into many a green valley drifts the appalling snow. Time breaks the threaded dances and the diver's brilliant bow. Oh, plunge your hands in water, plunge them up into the wrist. Stare, stare in the basin, and wonder what you fox in the cupboard. The desert sighs in the bed, and the crack in the teacup opens. Elaine to the land of the dead. 
where the beggars raffle the banknotes and the giant is enchanting to Jack. And the lily white boy is a roarer and Jill goes down on her back. Oh look, look in the mirror, oh look in your distress. Life remains a blessing, although you cannot bless. Oh stand, stand at the window, as the tears scald and start. You shall love your crooked neighbor with your crooked heart. It was late, late in the evening. The lovers, they were gone. The clocks had ceased their chiming, and the deep river ran on. Could you tell that I had fun with that one? The next poem is From In Time of War. 14. Yes, we are going to suffer now. The sky throbs like a feverish forehead. Pain is real. The groping searchlights suddenly reveal the little natures that will make us cry. Who never quite believed they could exist. Not where we were, they take us by surprise. Like ugly long forgotten memories. And like a conscience, all the guns resist. Behind each sociable home loving eye, the private massacres are taking place. All women, Jews, the rich, the human race. The mountains cannot judge us when we lie. We dwell upon the earth, the earth obeys, the intelligent and evil till they die. So they are and suffer, that is all they do. A bandage hides the place where each is living, his knowledge of the world restricted to the treatment that the instruments are giving. And lie apart like Ypres, truth in their sense is how much they can bear. It is not talk like ours, but groans they smother, and are remote as plants. We stand elsewhere. For who, when healthy, can become a foot, even a scratch we can't recall when cured? but are boisterous in a moment, and believe in the common world of the uninjured, and cannot imagine isolation. Only happiness is shared, and anger, and the idea of love. 18. Far from the heart of culture he was used, abandoned by his general and his lice. Under a padded quilt he closed his eyes, and vanished. He will not be introduced. When this campaign is tidied into books, no vital knowledge perish in his skull. His jokes were stale, like wartime, he was dull. His name is lost forever, like his looks. He neither knew nor chose the good, but taught us, and added meaning like a comma, when he turned to dust in China, that our daughters be fit to love the earth, and not again disgraced before the dogs, that where are waters, mountains, and houses may be also men. The next poem is The Capital. Quarter of pleasures where the rich are always waiting, waiting expensively for miracles to happen. Oh, little restaurant where the lovers eat each other, cafe where exiles have established a malicious village. You with your charm and your apparatus have abolished the strictness of winter and the spring's compulsion. Far from the lights, the outraged, punitive father. The dullness of mere obedience here is apparent. Yet with orchestras and glances, oh, you betray us. To belief in our infinite powers and the innocent, unobservant offender falls in a moment, victim to the heart's invisible furies. In unlighted streets you hide away the appalling factories where lives are made for a temporary use. Like collars or chairs, rooms where the lonely are battered, slowly like pebbles into fortuitous shapes. But the sky you illumine, your glow is visible far, into the dark countryside, the enormous, the frozen, where, hinting at the forbidden like a wicked uncle, night after night to the farmer's children you beckon. The next poem I will read is Musée des Beaux Arts. About suffering, they were never wrong. The old masters, how well they understood. Its human position, how it takes place. 
while someone else is eating or opening a window or just walking dully along. How when the aged are reverently, passionately waiting for the miraculous birth, there always must be children who did not specially want it to happen, skating on a pond or at the edge of the wood. They never forgot that even the dreadful martyrdom must run its course. Anyhow, in a corner, some untidy spot, where the dogs go on with their doggy life, and the torturer's horse scratches its innocent behind a tree. In, Bug in Bruegel's Icarus, for instance, how everything turns away. Quite leisurely from the disaster, the plowman may have heard the splash, the forsaken cry, but for him it was not an important failure. The sun shone as it had, two on the white legs disappearing into the green water and the expensive delicate ship that must have seen something amazing a boy falling out of the sky had somewhere to get to and sailed calmly on <sighs> kind of butchered that one very sorry for that this next poem is in memory of w b yates he disappeared in the dead of winter the brooks were frozen, the airports almost deserted, and snow disfigured the public statues, the mercury sank in the mouth of the dying day. Oh, all the instruments agree, the day of his death was a dark, cold day. Far from his illness, the wolves ran on through the evergreen forests, the peasant river was untempted by the fashionable quays, by mourning tongues, the death of the poet was kept from his poems. But for him it was his last afternoon as himself, an afternoon of nurses and rumors, the provinces of his body revolted, the squares of his mind were empty, silence invaded the suburbs, the current of his feeling failed, he became his admirers. Now he is scattered among a hundred cities, and wholly given over to unfamiliar affections, to find his happiness in another kind of wood and be punished under a foreign code of conscience. The words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living. But in the importance and noise of tomorrow, when the brokers are roaring like beasts on the floor of the bourse, and the poor have the sufferings to which they are fairly accustomed, and each in the cell of himself is almost convinced of his freedom, a few thousand will think of this day, as one thinks of a day when one did something slightly unusual. Oh, all the instruments agree, the day of his death was a dark, cold day. 2. You were silly like us, your gift survived it all, the parish of rich women, physical decay, yourself, mad Ireland, hurt you into poetry, now Ireland has her madness and her weather still, for poetry makes nothing happen. It survives in the valley of its saying where exec ex executives would never want to tamper. It flows south from ranches of isolation and the busy griefs, raw towns that we believe and die in. It survives a way of happening, a mouth. 3. Earth, receive an honored guest. William Yates is laid to rest. Let the Irish vessel lie emptied of its poetry. Time that is intolerant of the brave and innocent, and indifferent in a week to a beautiful physique. Worships language and forgives everyone by whom it lives, pardons cowardice, conceit, lays its honor at their feet. Time that with this stranger excuse, pardoned Kipling and his views, and will pardon Paul Claudel, pardons him for writing well. In the nightmare of the dark, all the dogs of Europe bark, and the living nation waits, each sequ sequestered in its hate. Intellectual disgrace stares from every human face, and the seas of pity lie, locked and frozen in each eye. Follow, poet, follow right, to the bottom of the night, with your unconstraining voice, still persuade us to rejoice. With the farming of a verse, make a vineyard of the curse, sing of human unsuccess, 
in a rapture of distress. In the deserts of the heart, let the healing he fountain start. In the prison of his days, teach the man how to praise. The next poem I will read is The Unknown Citizen to JS-07-M-378. This marble monument is erected by the state. He was found by the Bureau of Statistics to be one against whom there was no official complaint, and all the reports on his conduct agree that in the modern sense of an old-fashioned word, he was a saint. He did, he served the greater community. Ex war till the day he retired. He worked in a factory and never got fired. Employers, Fudge Motors, Inc. Yet he wasn't a scab or odd in his views, for his union reports that he paid his dues. Our report on his union shows it was sound, and our social psychology work found that he was popular with his mates and liked to drink. The press are convinced that he bought a paper every day, and that his reactions to advertisements were normal in every way. Policies taken out in his name prove that he was fully insured, and his health card shows he was once in hospital but left it cured. Both producers' research and high-grade living declare he was fully sensible to the advantages of the installment plan, and had everything necessary to the modern man. Video, a car and a frigidaire. Our researchers into public opinion are content that he held the proper opinions for the time of year. When there was peace, he was for peace. When there was war, he went. He was married and added five children to the population, which our eugenist says was the right number for a parent of his generation. And our teachers report that he never interfered with their education. Was he free? Was he happy? The question is absurd. Had everything been wrong, we should certainly have heard. The next poem I will read is titled September 1st, 1939. I sit in one of the dive, 52nd Street, uncertain and afraid as the copes expire of a low dishonest decade. Waves of anger and fear circulate over the bright and darkened lands of the earth, obsessing our private lives. The unmentionable odor of death offends the September night. Accurate scholarship can unearth the whole offense, from Luther until now, that has driven a culture mad. Find what occurred at Linz, that huge imago made, a psychopathic god. I and the public know what all school children learn. Those to whom evil is done, do evil in return. Exiled Thucydides knew all that a speech can say about democracy and what dictators do. The elderly rubbish they talk to an apathetic grave analyzed all in his book, The Enlightenment Driven Away. The habit-forming pain, mismanagement, and grief we must suffer them all again, into this neutral air where blind skyscrapers use their full height to proclaim the strength of collective man, each language pours its vein. Competitive excuse, but who can live for long? In an euphoric dream, out of the mirror they stare, imperialism's face and the international wrong. Faces along the bar cling to their average day. The lights must never go out, the music must always play. All the conventions conspire to make this fort assume the furniture of home, lest we should see where we are, lost in a haunted wood, children afraid of the night, who have never been happy or good. The windiest militant trash, important persons shout, is not so Krudsky wrote about Dia Giliv, is true of the normal heart. For the error bred to th in the bone of each woman and each man craves what it cannot have. Not universal love, but to be loved alone. Live dark into the ethical life, the dense commuters come, repeating their morning vow, I will be true to the wife, I'll concentrate more on my work. And helpless governors wake to resume their compulsory game.
Who can release them now? Who can reach the deaf? Who can speak for the dumb? All I have is a voice to undo the folded lie, the romantic lie in the brain of the sensual man in the street, and the lie of authority whose buildings grope the sky. There is no such thing as the state, and no one exists alone. Hunger allows no choice to the citizen or the police. We must love one another or die. Defenseless under the night, our world in stupor lies, yet dotted everywhere, ironic points of light, flash out wherever the just exchange their messages. May I, composed like them, of eros and of dust, beleaguered by the same, negation and despair, show in affirming flame. The next poem I will read is In Memory of Sigmund Freud. When there are so many we shall have to mourn, when grief has been made so public and exposed, to the critique of a whole epoch, the frailty of our conscience and anguish. Of whom shall we speak? For every day they die among us, those who were doing us some good, and knew it was never enough, but hoped to improve a little by living. Such was this doctor. Still at eighty, he wished to think of our life, from whose unruliness so many plausible young futures, with threats of flattery, with threats or flattery, ask obedience. But his wish was denied him. He closed his eyes upon that last picture common to us all, of problems like relatives standing, puzzled and jealous about our dying, for about him at the very end were still those he had studied, the nervous and the nights, and shades that still waited to enter the bright circle of his recognition, disappointment as he was taken from his old interest, to go back to the earth in London, an important Jew who died in exile. Only hate was happy, hoping to augment his practice now and his shabby clientele, who think they can be cured by killing and covering the gardens with ashes. Are still alive, but in a world he changed, simply by looking back with no false regrets. All that he did was to remember, like in the old and be honest like children. He wasn't clever at all. He merely told the unhappy present to recite the past, like a poetry lesson till sooner or later it faltered at the, at the line where, long ago, the accusations had begun, and suddenly knew by whom it had been judged. How rich life had been and how silly, and was life forgiven and more humble, able to approach the future as a friend, without a wardrobe of excuses, without a set mask of rectitude or an embarrassing over-familiar gesture. No wonder the ancient cultures of conceit in his technique of unsettlement foresaw the fall of princes, the collapse of their lucrative patterns of frustration. If he succeeded, why, the generalized life would become impossible, the monolith of state be broken and prevented the cooperation of avengers. Of course they called on God, but he went his way, down among the lost people like Dante, down to the stinking fosse where the injured lead the ugly life of the rejected, and showed us what evil is, not as we thought, deeds that must be punished, but our lack of faith our dishonest mood of denial, the, consupis the consupiscence of the oppressor. And if something of the autocratic pose, the paternal strictness he distrusted, still clung to his utterance and features, it was a protective imitation. For one who lived among enemies so long, if often he was wrong and at times absurd, to us he is no more a person now but a, cl but a whole climate of opinion. <laughs> under whom we conduct our differing lives, like whether he can only hinder or help. The proud can still be proud, but find it a little har harder, and the tyrant tries to make him do, but doesn't care for him much. He quietly surrounds all our habits of growth. He extends till the tired and even the remotest, most miserable duchy have felt the change in their bones and are cheered, and the child unlucky in his little state, some hearth where freedom is excluded, a hive whose honey is fear and worry. Feels calmer now and somehow assured of escape, while as they lie on the grass of our neglect, 
so many long-forgotten objects, revealed by his undiscouraged shining, are returned to us and made precious again. Games we had thought we must drop as we grew up, little noises we dared not laugh at, faces we made when no one was looking. But he wishes us more than this, to be free is often to be lonely. He would unite the unequal moieties fractured by our own well-meaning sense of justice, would restore to the larger the wit and will the smaller possesses but can only use, for arid disputes would give back to the son the mother's richness of feeling. But he would have us remember, most of all, to be enthusiastic over the night, not only for the sense of wonder it alone has to offer, but also because it needs our love, for with sad eyes its delectable creatures look up and beg us dumbly to ask them to follow. They are exiles who long for the future. That lies in our power. They too would rejoice, if allowed to serve enlightenment like him, even to bear our cry of Judas, as he did, and all must bear who serve it. One rational voice is dumb. Over a grave, the household of impulse mourns one dearly loved. Sad is Eros, builder of cities, and weeping anarchic Aphrodite. The next and last poem I will read is The Shield of Achilles. She looked over his shoulder, for vines and olive trees, marble well-governed cities, and ships upon untamed seas. But there on the shining metal, his hands had put instead an artificial wilderness and a sky like lead. A plain without a feature, bare and brown, no blade of grass, no sign of neighborhood, nothing, nothing to eat and nowhere to sit down yet congregated on its blankness stood an unintelligible multitude a million eyes a million boots in line without expression waiting for a sign out of the air a voice without a face proved by statistics that some cause was just in tones as dry and level as the place no one was cheered and nothing was discussed column by column in a cloud of dust they marched away, enduring a belief whose logic brought them somewhere else to grief. She looked over his shoulder for ritual pieties, white flower garlanded heifers, libation and sacrifice. But there on the shining metal, where the altar should have been, she saw by his flickering forge light quite another scene. Barbed wire enclosed an arbitrary spot where board officials lounged, one cracked a joke and centuries sweated, for the day was hot, a crowd of ordinary, decent folk, watched from without and neither moved nor spoke, as three pale figures were led forth and bound to three posts driven upright in the ground. The mass and majesty of this world, all that carries weight and always weighs the hands of others, they were small, and could not hope for help or no help came. What their foes liked to do was done, their shame was all the worst could wish. They lost their pride, and died as men before their bodies died. She looked over his shoulder for athletes at their games, men and women in a dance, moving their sweet limbs, quick, quick, to music. But there on the shining shield, his hands had set no dancing floor, but a weed-choked field. A ragged urchin, aimless and alone, loitered about that vacancy. A bird flew up to safety from his well-aimed stone. That girls are raped, that two boys knife a third, were axioms to him who'd never heard of any world where promises were kept, or one could weep because another wept. The thin-lipped armorer, Hephaestus, hobbled away. Thetis of the shining breasts cried out in dismay. At what the god had wrought to please her son, the strong, iron-hearted, man-slaying Achilles, who would not live long. Thank you very much for joining me tonight for this reading of W.H. Auden. 
I hope you enjoyed as much as I enjoyed reading it. <laughs> Have a great night. Thank you. And please subscribe or comment if you feel that it is something you would like to do.